You know, God's people are imperfect. I don't know if you noticed that, but uh, <laughs> don't say anything, David, when you come out later. <laughs> We're certainly not going to do that. You ever wake up in the morning and just know, today is gonna be one hell of a day. This morning on JW.org, I saw a unprecedented announcement. Governing body member Anthony Morris III is no longer serving on the governing body and it absolutely blew me away. Uh, the Jehovah's Witness news has been pretty boring as of late, but boy oh boy, this is an absolute whopper. So let's do this. Welcome back to the JW Thoughts channel. Welcome. My name is Wally, and today we have massive news. Now, the announcement in and of itself doesn't give us a whole lot of details. It just says he is no longer serving as a governing body member. So what does that really mean? Well, there's a couple things that we can eliminate. Uh, I think probably the biggest one that I've seen, at least on social media, is maybe it was due to health concerns. But I don't think that that is really the case. I could be wrong on this one. But it's my understanding that governing body members serve till death. It is a lifelong assignment or position that they hold. And even if they have dementia and they don't know what's going on, they'll still get wheeled in on a wheelchair and show up for those Wednesday morning governing body meetings. So I don't think that this would have to do with any sort of health concerns or complications, which means it has to do with something else. What is that something else? As most of you know, and as I have always said, Tony Morris is my favorite governing body member because you never know what you're going to get with him. He is just a wild card. Sometimes he'll be giving his talk and everything will be going all hunky-dory. And you know when Tony Morris is giving a talk and he puts those notes down, it's about to get pretty spicy. And we've seen some real real whoppers uh, throughout history. So I I have personally met Tony Morris. I had dinner with him. Um, I was there in the, in the front row of the assembly hall, whatever he gave uh, back when, man, that must have been 2014 now. Wow, almost 10 years ago. Jeez, I feel old. Anyway, uh, when he gave his infamous tight pants talk and he was looking right at me and I was looking right at him and uh, the whole burnt hot dogs thing, like I've seen all of that live and in person. So... I really think that having someone like him on the governing body as a forward-facing you know, public speaker was ultimately harmful for the direction Watchtower is trying to go. I've been saying this for a while, and most people don't agree with me, but that I think that Watchtower is going to try and soften some of its more stringent policies, the ones that are a little bit more oppressive. I know most people say, no, they're going to double down and really just dig their heels in the ground, but I, I respectfully disagree. I think that they're going to try and loosen up as much as they possibly can with still holding on to some of their core tenets. And that way, it's easier to be a Jehovah's Witness. There's not this constant pressure and anxiety because it's just, it's not sustainable. No one wants to be a Jehovah's Witness. And the only reason you stay is because the end is right around the corner. And at a certain point, you gotta wake up and smell the roses and say, hey, we don't actually know when the end is coming. The generation, blah, 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 blah. And maybe he was ultimately getting in the way of that goal. They appointed two new governing body members that maybe are going to try and soften things up a little bit. Maybe they're going to try and back down on some of their harder stances, maybe become a little bit more central and not so polarizing. And Toni Morris was one of the most polarizing governing body members. And he was very opinionated and he wasn't afraid to say it how it was. So it could be a move like that. Now, I don't know how that would go, because if they removed him, because they're trying to take the organization in a different direction, 
they do run the risk of sufficiently pissing him off that he actually maybe turns his back on the organization and goes public with things. That could be very dangerous. So removing him for that, not quite sure. What do I actually think, like in my heart of heart of hearts? I think, honestly, maybe he genuinely, genuinely had a drinking problem. And it had gone on long enough. And they, people knew about it. People understood it. And maybe it was just finally right for Watchtower to say, hey, you know, we've known about this thing for a long time, but we need, we can get this guy out of here and do it judicially. So that way we're not removing him for no cause. You know, he knows it. We know it. Everyone knows it. Maybe that was the case. And they're just like, well, here's a perfect opportunity. We're trying to take the organization in a different direction. Maybe we can get him on, on this thing. Or maybe it's like I said, and uh, how he went from being a uh, apostate to a governing body leader and, you know, or a Jehovah's Witness leader. I don't know if you guys remember, but I think it was two annual meetings ago where he told the story about how he was very skeptical and said, hey, this thing could go on till 2020 and uh, way back in the 70s. And uh, obviously that would have been completely contrary to the general Watchtower teachings. But I think even that was an indication that Tony Morris has always been willing to sort of do his own thing or just kind of be wrapped to his own beat. And if you're trying to build a global cult, you know, <laughs> you don't want someone that is willing to go off script, that is willing to put the notes down. But hey, I think this is absolutely fascinating. Let me know down in the comments below what you think it might be. And yeah, I guess we'll just sort of follow this story as it develops. Maybe we'll get some more announcements soon if we hear that he's been disfellowshipped, if we hear that he's been removed from Bethel. All of this could be really huge. And I'm assuming that there's not going to be a whole lot of information. Uh, I think even Bethelites were completely blindsided by this whole situation. I, I don't think anyone really saw this coming because I'm sure someone uh, down the line would have uh, would have started talking about it and it would have made its way to uh, to the internet. But anyway, with all that being said, if you're still around, don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you next time. <laughs>